All right, we have a big day today. Uh, it is Introduction to Derivatives, uh, part one. So we'll do part two on our next lesson. But uh, but this is the big one. This is a uh, this is sort of what we were building to this whole this whole unit. Uh, and this is how we finished the unit. Actually, is looking at at the the basic principles of what a derivative is. And a derivative fundamentally is a, our way of calculating the slope for our curve. Right, that was the whole goal in the first place. Right, we talked about our secants and how we could let our secant become closer and closer to a tangent. We had this picture, right? We called it the difference quotient, which was just the, the slope of the secant. But we said as h got smaller and smaller and smaller, right? H was h was that distance right there, which would also be our run. As it got smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, this, this secant line right here would gradually get closer and closer to being a tangent line right at that point but now we know stuff about limits right so so that idea of letting h get smaller and smaller and smaller is just a limit so this is this is our expression uh, the slope of the tangent line is uh, that that difference quotient uh, the rise on the top the run on the bottom but what we're going to do is we're just going to take the limit we're going to say let h get as close to zero as possible and now we have methods of evaluating those, right? We've learned all of our limit properties. Uh, we know the rules, we're, we know we're allowed to substitute in for the most part. Um, we have to be a little bit careful when we have those indeterminate forms and we need that for today. Those are gonna happen every time. Um, but, but now we know what to do with the limit. So we're gonna, we're gonna try this one right here. It says determine the slope of the tangent to the function f of x equals x squared, nice easy function when x is two. So I'm gonna write down that, that formula again, it said the limit as h approaches zero, and we had written down f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, right? We're gonna let h get closer and closer to zero. Um, now in this case, we've said specifically to find the slope when x is two. So that means that our, our a value is two. We're picking a particular location. So I can change this a little bit. It's f of two plus h minus f of two. So now that I've subbed in that two, we're now being very specific. We're trying to find the slope of the tangent when x or when a is two. Um, well, f of two plus h, that's just function notation, right? That says wherever there was an x, sub in a two plus h. So our, our function was x squared. I'll sub in two plus h squared. And then f of two would be two squared. So this isn't bad. Uh, it is a limit. And what I want you to notice, of course, is the way we tried to evaluate limits was we subbed in zero. And if we subbed in zero here, we'd end up with a zero on the bottom. And two plus zero is two, squared is four. Take away four, we get zero on the top two. So that was our indeterminate form, which is which is trouble for us. So we need a way of somehow canceling out that H on the bottom. Um, and one of the ways that works here, wasn't the way that we focused on before, but I would mentioned it, uh, was just expanding. So if I expand the top, uh, remember that's two plus H times two plus H. So it's four plus four. 4h plus h squared when I expand that, uh, take away 4 over h. And you can see there that the 4s are going to cancel. So I get 4h plus h squared over h, and I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to jump up to there. Uh, and because those four canceled, those fours canceled, now everything left has an H in it. So what, I, what I'm really doing is I'm factoring an H out of the top, like that. And now it's really obvious, I think, that those H's cancel. Remember, technically, technically, uh, H equals zero is a restriction, right? We're saying H can't actually be zero. But now while I do this limit, 
what we do is we sub in h equals zero, but that's just a shortcut to say what we're doing is getting really, really close. So now that I evaluate sub in the zero, notice to go from this line to this line. As soon as I sub in the zero value for h, I drop the limit symbol. Right now we're just evaluating it, and the answer is four. So your final answer there is at, for the function x squared, when x is two, the slope of the tangent line is exactly four, exactly four. And we could have done that before using approximations, right? Picking some, uh, picking some secants. And what we probably would have picked x is two and x equals 2.001 or something. And we would have got a slope a little bit bigger than four. And we would have said, oh, look, that's, that's probably just gonna be four. Well, now we've got our method. We know how to do limits. So we can actually calculate it right away. Um, that last example is a good one, but it's not actually the way we'll do things that often. Uh, because what we did there was right from the beginning, we specifically said, we're gonna find the slope of the tangent at x equals two. And what we wanna do is do things more generally. So here is, this is what the derivative is. The derivative is a new function. So it's, and it's actually written f prime of x. And you just say it that way, you say f prime of x, which, or you could say the derivative of x. Uh, and it's defined this way. Now that looks probably almost identical, except now it's got an x there instead of an a. Um, all that's gonna mean is it's gonna create a formula for us rather than getting a specific answer. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, the, the last example gave us an answer directly of four. When we do our next question, it's gonna give us a, a new formula for how we can calculate the slope at a particular spot. Um, this little note isn't real important just yet, but it's the right time to mention it. Um, this is the notation that I'm going to use the most, f prime of x, but there's other ways that we can write it. Sometimes we can write it y prime, that little apostrophe we say prime. So sometimes we write that, that makes sense because f of x replaced y, right? When we started learning function notation. And the other way, which becomes really much more significant with some higher level calculus, and we'll do a little bit of that later, uh, is dy by dx, that's how we say it, dy by dx. Um, really what it means is the derivative of the function y in terms of uh, the variable x is kind of what that's saying. So that, w when we start using it more, when you start using it more in future years, it becomes a very nice notation, uh, but we'll worry about it later. I just want you to be aware of it. Okay, here we go. Our first, our first real, real derivative it says determine the derivative of the function f of x equals x squared. So it doesn't say this time to do it at a particular value doesn't say anything about at x equals two like the last one did. So we are now doing everything in general. So I've got an x there instead of that two value like we had in the last question. But it doesn't really change too much. We still do the same thing. The algebra is a little bit trickier because we don't have a number in it. But, but we still do, if, I mean, if you have that last example with you, we're gonna do almost exactly the same thing. When it says f of x plus h, that means sub in x plus h into the expression. And our, our function was x squared, so it's x plus h all squared. And then f of x was just x squared, right? That was what we were told that f of x was, all over h. So very similar to what we had last time, except last time we had a two. Um, we have the same problem here. If I sub in zero right away, I get zero on the bottom, that's the obvious one. And you also get a zero on the top, right? The h disappears, so it'll be x squared minus x squared. So we have zero over zero, we have our indeterminate form again, no good. So I'm going to expand. If I expand the top, and remember again, it's x plus h times x plus h, to give us an x squared plus 2xh. If you're not sure about how I got this, take your time and write it out a little bit more carefully, okay? All over h. In the last example, we had a four at the beginning and a four at the end, and those canceled. This time it's the x squareds that cancel. 
so we're left with 2xh plus h squared. And that's, again, very similar to the last example. Uh, everything there has an h in it. So I'm going to factor an h out. Oops. The h's will cancel. There and there. So remember, this this was a limit idea still, right? We were trying to find the slope of a secant, or excuse me, the slope of a tangent. And to evaluate that limit, oh, I'm really tight on space there. And I sub in 0, so 2x plus 0. And I'll change colors here. The final answer then is the derivative, f prime of x, is just 2x. And that's called our derivative. And that's now a formula that's going to allow us to calculate um, the slopes at any point we want. We're going to try it here in just a second. I'm going to move this out of the way. Don't have enough space here. Go. Go. We'll save this. So that was the important part. That really was the important part. We just needed to know what the derivative was. So to do part B, it says determine the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 3. Well, the example we did just a second ago was when x equals 2, right? And in fact, let me back up for a second. We did it here with x equals 2. Nope, not there. Here with x equals 2. Did the whole calculation, and we found out that it was 4. What I want you to notice is if I use this function now, this guy, my derivative function, if I sub in x equals 2, the answer that I get is 4. Right, it tells you what the derivative is, tells you what the slope of the tangent would be. So to do this one, all we have to do is sub in the 3, and we get a nice little answer of 6. Okay, So it turns out really, really nicely that way. Uh, the advantage of getting the, the function, the derivative function here, is now I can calculate uh, as many of those as I want really, really quick, right? If I, my next question was determine the instantaneous rate of change when x equals 30, then we just go 2 times 30 and get 60. You just get it. You don't have to go back and do that massive calculation again. Uh, this one's a little bit different. It says determine the point on the function where the instantaneous rate of change is minus 10. So instantaneous rate of change, that's the slope of the tangent, right? So what that's saying then is that I need the slope of the tangent to be minus 10. So the answer is minus 10. What, what x value do we need to put in there to make that happen? Um, so let me go back here and write the whole function down. f prime of x was 2x. We know we want an answer of minus 10. And so x has to be minus 5. So when x is minus 5, we'd get a slope of minus 10. question was for the point, though, I suppose, wasn't it? So I need to know the y value. Which would be 25. So at the point, So these are some of the things that that we can use the derivative for. Works really nicely for that sort of thing. Let's give this one a try. Uh, a little bit harder. Uh, the function is x cubed, and it says using first principles. First principles is exactly what we're doing here. It's using this this formula. So what we're going to learn in the next rest of the semester, I suppose is shortcuts for how we can find these derivatives. And you're actually going to, I think, start spotting some relatively quickly. Uh, and if you don't, we'll, I'll show them to you. You'll, you'll certainly get them. Uh, but first principles is this long way, and it's, it's important. So on our test next week, um, this is this is what you're going to have to be able to do. You have to be able to show me how to do things the long way. Um, 
them as h approaches 0. Our function this time is x cubed. So it's x plus h cubed minus x cubed all over h. All right, and that becomes harder, right? x plus h cubed means x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Um, so you might want to take a minute and just sort of write that down off to the side. Um, you have to do a little bit of multiplying, but you end up getting x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. And if you're not sure how to do that, come and check with me, okay? That's that's something you've got to be able to do, but I think you know how to do that from advanced functions. And the nice part is, uh, if you take a look at the first term and the last term again, you've got those you got those x cubes, and they're going to disappear. So we get the three x squared h still there. Three x h squared is still there. H cubed is still there, and Everything on the top has an h. I should have mentioned, I forgot again. Um, if we'd tried subbing in that zero right away, and if I tried subbing in that zero back up here, we get zero over zero, and we'd be stuck. So that's why we're doing this. We're, we're trying to get this h on the bottom to cancel out. So since there's an h in everything on the top, I'm going to factor it out with a 3x squared h. So the h's cancel. Three x squared. And I need a little more space. There we go. And so now we're in good shape, right? We've gotten rid of our problem with the, the h on the bottom. I can actually go ahead and sub in the 0. Uh, the first part doesn't have a, an h in it, so no worries there. But this one does, 3x times 0, 0 squared. So everything disappears except the 3x squared. So that there is now our formula for how to calculate the slope at any point on the function, or remember our original function was f of x equals x cubed. So if I want to know the slope at x equals 4, you just sub in the 4 for that f prime of x, our derivative function, and you get the answer. Okay. This is going to take a little bit of time for us to play around with, uh, with derivatives just to get a better handle on, on what it means and how to use them, but this is the beginning. Okay. This is, this is our first look at how we can actually go ahead and calculate the derivative of a function and the derivative is our our method of calculating the slope at a particular point